good evening and welcome to Guest Road Baptist Church Wednesday night prayer meeting and Bible study. We are glad that you are joining us via the internet. Um, I'm Pastor Dan Tilly, the senior pastor at Guest Road Baptist Church, and I welcome you personally to our service. We hope and pray that God will bless you through this service. Please let me share with you just a few things. We have an online prayer list on our webpage. If you'd might like for us to pray about something or someone, an issue or whatever, you can make a prayer request and you can make that anonymously or attach your name to it, however you would like. I also encourage you to join us for all of our services. Sunday mornings is at 1030. We are live streaming at 1030. This past Sunday we were not able to because of internet problems not beyond our con that were beyond our control, but uh, all of our services are online. Uh, Sunday mornings at 10.30, Sunday nights at 6 o'clock, and again last night uh, we could not, or Sunday night we could not stream live uh, because of the internet issues, and then our Wednesday nights of course are all online, so we encourage you to be a part of all of them. We will be having a special time of prayer this coming Saturday at 9 a.m. Um, we encourage you to come out and be a part of that time here at the church. It will last about 25 to 30 minutes, and it will be a prayer of reformation for our nation for uh, corresponding with the prayer time in Washington uh, for the return, returning to God. I also encourage you to be a part of our revival the first full week of uh, October beginning on the 4th running through Wednesday night. Our Sunday morning service will be at 1030. Each of our evening services will be at 7. They will be outside on the radio uh, there and they will be uh, broadcasted live if we're able to hopefully we will be able to also on thank oh, no, not Thanksgiving I'm getting way ahead of myself here on Halloween we will not be doing trunks of treat this year because of the social distancing issues with that but we will have the treat trail hopefully set up and that will be several scenes set up that will depict the Bible story from beginning to end and uh, you will be able to come through in your car and see those scenes and receive a little treat bag at each station. So I encourage you to come out. That is for ages birth through 13 for the children in those age categories there. So I encourage you to be a part of all those things that are going on here at Guest Road Baptist Church. And uh, we're working on another um, movie night, so uh, we'll make that information available as soon as possible. Again, thank you for joining us, and let's begin with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we are thankful for your grace and your mercy. For Father, every day your uh, mercies are fresh and anew, and we are just thankful for that. We thank you for Jesus and the salvation that he offers to all, dear Father, who will believe in him. And we pray, dear God, uh, for our time tonight to be a time that honors you, glorifies you, furthers your kingdom, and is in line with your will. And we ask this in the name above all names, that of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Each week we go sort of over our prayer list. We don't go through it name by name because some people on the prayer list do not wish their name to be made public on the internet. Uh, but we do break our prayer list down into several areas. Uh, members who are nursing homes, independent living centers, members who are homebound, our members themselves, our relatives of our members and friends of our members. And then we have a, uh, a final category, ministry needs. If we think about it, those who are in rest homes, nursing home, independent living centers, and those who are homebound, uh, this is uh, doubly hard on them as family and friends cannot come and visit them and be a part of their lives because of the uh, restrictions because of COVID-19. So please be in prayer for each of them and ask God's blessing upon them. We have several members with uh, many problems. We have several praise reports also of our members who have had surgery and are doing well, and we thank God for that. Uh, under ministry needs, though, we do have some things there that I would like to share with you. Uh, please be in prayer for our missionaries at home and abroad, for those who are out there trying to plant churches, those who are out there trying to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We want to pray uh, for our health care workers in this pandemic, pray for those who are sick in this. We have several members who have family and friends who are sick, and so we want to lift them up. Uh, we also want to pray for our military. They are willing to stand in harm's way and place themselves in that situation on our behalf to ensure our freedoms. Of course, we want to pray for the health care workers, doctors, nurses, and uh, firemen, police officers, first responders. All of these people are, are serving in a great way at this time. 
course, we want to pray for the lost to be saved, the great commission to be fulfilled, and the great commandment to be fulfilled. We want to pray for believers to grow in their Christ likeness, and we want to pray um, for the uh, uh, nation in which we live and for our leadership and for the upcoming election. We are not trying to tell you who to vote for in any shape, form, or fashion. We just encourage you to vote as God lays it upon your heart and as you are led to vote and uh, as that is your right and your privilege and your honor as a part of this nation. Uh, we do want to pray also um, for uh, all of the needs that we see around us every day in our life when we ride down the road we see people in other cars we see people on the sides of the street uh, as we go places we meet people and all of these people have needs they have great needs in their lives so be sensitive to those needs and just lift them up as a time of praise tonight let me share with you from psalms 34 verse 11 it says i will bless the lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth. If we think about that, continually uh, be in my mouth at all times. It's talking about praising God at all times. That means all situations and circumstances. We may not be praising God and thanking God for the situations and circumstances that we find ourselves in because we do know that some situations and circumstances are very difficult, very hard and to deal with, and so we don't want to think, be thankful for those. But in the midst of them, we still have God's promises, his grace, his mercy, his compassion, his provision. We have his, his guidance and his direction, and none of those things change. Even when our lives get turned upside down, God's grace and God's mercy and love and compassion, all those things, his kindness, gentleness, all of those things are still true. He has not abandoned us or forsaken us. He is still with us. Uh, even when we get in situations that frustrate us, even when we get in situations that harm us, uh, when we face difficulties, God is still there. God is still on his throne. God is still in control. And we can still place our faith in him so we can be praising God even in the most difficult situations of life. But then there are those wonderful things that happen in life, those glorious things that take place in our life. When we see lost people are saved, when we see that, that believers are strengthened and encouraged and come back to the Lord if they backslidden in those times in our own lives where we we have great things good reports from doctors our children do well our grandchildren are blessed and we are just have praise on our heart for God because all of those things are from him for he is the giver of all good and perfect gifts he gives us all spiritual blessings so we need to be thanking God praising God for his blessing upon our lives uh, again, I share with you that if you have a prayer request, please let us know on the internet. You can uh, place your uh, prayer request there, and we will certainly be glad to pray for that. So at this time, let's bow our heads and let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we will move into our Bible study for this evening. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we acknowledge that you are the one true living God, holy, just, perfect, righteous, faithful, and true all-knowing, all-powerful, transcending time and space. We acknowledge that you are the God of creation. You spoke and it came into being, dear Father. We acknowledge that you are the God of love and that you loved us while we are yet sinners, dear Father, and you commended your love towards us while we are yet sinners and that Christ died for us and that you loved us enough to give your only begotten Son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We acknowledge, dear God, that you are the God of salvation, that all who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, shall be saved, dear Father. We acknowledge that you are not only the, the God of the world and the universe, but you are our God, is your people who have called us and you have drawn us into a relationship with you by opening yourself to us that we can know you. And we pray, dear Father, that we would not take that relationship lightly, but we would strive with all of our heart, soul, and mind to love you and to be a part of you and to live in relationship with you, dear Father, as your people, fulfilling your great command to love you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and fulfilling the great commission to go and to make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever you have commanded us, dear Father. We adore you, dear God, because you do bless us, you do encourage us, you do strengthen us, you do provide for us, you do not ever leave or forsake us, dear Father. So we adore you, we praise you, we thank you, dear Father. 
Father, for our members who are sick and those who are suffering and uh, friends and relatives, dear Father, we lift them up and ask your blessing upon them. For those, dear Father, that will be hearing uh, this time, dear Father, we pray for each one of them and ask your blessings to be upon those, dear Father. Those who are in the rest homes, nursing home, assisted living and uh, so forth, dear Father, as they are oftentimes isolated and oftentimes alone, dear Father, we ask you to bless, encourage, and strengthen and provide for them. Be with those who are their caregivers and give them strength. Be with their families as we know that they are concerned and unable to tend to their loved one in some, sometimes in such ways that they need to be tended to. Father, we are careful to pray for the lost, for their salvation, that they would confess with their mouth and believe in their heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, dear Father, that you would lead someone to share the gospel with them, that your Holy Spirit would convict them of sin, judgment, and righteousness, dear Father. We pray, dear God, for our missionaries around this world trying to share the gospel. We pray, dear God, for church planters who are in areas that are dark and where there are no churches that you would strengthen and encourage them. We pray for our nation and our social issues and our needs, our election, dear Father. We pray, dear Father, for health care workers and for the pandemic we live in now, that you would just bless there and that there would be a success in coming up with a vaccine for that, dear Father. And Father, we, we just pray for the upcoming time of prayer this Saturday, the return, dear Father. We pray for those who will be going to Washington to pray. We pray for those who will be praying in their homes, those who will be gathering at churches or other locations, dear Father. May we, dear God, truly bend ourselves to your will and pray earnestly, dear Father, to for our nation to return to you, dear God. Father, we, we close as we started with adoration because of who you are and your actions. We just give you praise. For there is no other God, and your hand is upon us every moment of our life, and our needs are met, and you are gracious. And so we ask you, dear Father, to accept our prayers and our praise, and to acknowledge, dear, and we acknowledge, dear Father, our need for your forgiveness. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This evening, as we continue in our studies of prayer, we come to the third of our six studies in a series on prayer. Uh, and this uh, prayer, our time of prayer tonight is uh, entitled Penetrating Prayers, and it's from Psalms 139, verses 23 and 24. That's Psalms 139, uh, verses 23 and 24, where David will be, we will be looking at David's prayer for God to search him, to try him, and to reveal certain things to him. Oftentimes in our prayer life, it is just a surface scratching, if you will. We scratch the surface with our prayers. Yes, we pray uh, earnestly over some burdens, some concerns that come into our lives, things that, that are great and impact us in a, in a grand manner and uh, put a burden upon, upon our hearts. We pray for those things, but are we praying for God? to penetrate into our being in totality to such a degree that it brings us to the point that we are growing in our sanctification, in our Christ-likeness, in our uh, opening ourselves up to receive more of God, to become that imitator of God as a dearly loved child, uh, loving God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and loving others as he's loved us, allowing God to penetrate in and reveal to us what needs to be removed, revealing to us what we need to put into our lives. Are we praying such a deep prayer that it is helping us to become what God has created us to become, what God wants us to become in relationship to him? Tonight, as I said, we're going to look at David's prayer um, in the Psalms here, in Psalms 139, 23, and 24. And we're going to look at David's prayer uh, at its intensity and its depth there. So let's look at Psalms 139, 23, and 24. It says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, O God, and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Let's pray over God's word. Father, we do pray for an illumination of scripture today 
to open our minds to what you have for us and that we would be ready to receive what you have for us. We ask this, dear Father, because we know that when you speak to us through your word, that we are hearing your voice and that your voice can touch and change and shape and mold in such ways as nothing else can. So, Father, please use your word this evening to penetrate deep within our lives, that we may pray penetrating prayers that help us to change our own lives, to grow in our likeness of Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as we think about what we just read, David's prayer, let me read it to you again. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, O God, and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. David's prayer here is certainly a prayer of penetration. It is a prayer for God to penetrate into his life to the nth degree and then to reveal some things to David so that his life would be growing deeper and deeper in relationship to God. Now, we can look at this with a cursory glance and we can see the elements. But as we look at this, let's don't just see the elements, note the intensity and the depth and the breadth of David's prayer here. First of all, let's look at how David asked God to penetrate into his life. David uses two very specific words to ask God to penetrate into his life. First of all, he says, search me. And secondly, he says, try me. Now, the word search here comes from the root word, which means to penetrate. And it is the concept or the idea of being examined. We can think of this in terms of going to the doctor and receiving an examination. When we go to the doctor, he can examine us on the outside and to a very limited degree on the inside. He can look at us. He can note our skin color. He can note our temperature. He can note certain things about our lives on the outside. And he can listen to our heart and to our lungs on the inside. He can take our blood pressure. And he can do some cursory things to look at our life and to sort of see if we are in health or if we are in need. Yet, when a doctor orders tests, when he draws blood and they do blood work and blood panels and they check things, when he orders a uh, sugar test for us, when he has x-rays done, when there's a CAT scan done, when there's an MRI done, a doctor can look at those tests and look at us from the outside to the inside, to the deepest core part of our body. That's what David is asking God to do. David, when he says, search me, O God, and know me, he's asking God to penetrate into him to the deepest level, to look at every aspect and every facet of his life, as we shall see in just a moment, but on a deep level, not just on a passing level. David is asking God to examine him so deeply that every single thing that is in David, past and present and even future, will be exposed to the eye of God. So that's the first thing he's asked. Search me, come and examine me on the most deepest penetrating level that there is. Then he goes beyond that and he says, try me and know my thoughts. Try here is literally to test, and it is the idea of testing precious metal. When you test precious metal, you test it for its purity. You want to see how pure the precious metal is, how pure the gold is, or how pure the, the brass is, not the brass, but the silver may be. The more pure that uh, a precious metal is, the more it is valuable, the more it's worth in itself there. So David is saying, God, I want you to test my purity. I want you to test and see if I'm pure, if I'm holy, if I'm righteous, if I'm just. I want you to examine me 
to the deepest level, then I want you to test me and make sure that I'm pure. I want you to, to do this to the nth degree also to the deepest reaches of my heart. So David is asking God, penetrate so deep into me that you're going to note everything about me. And then I want you to test my purity. And then secondly, notice here what David asked God to actually search and to try or to test in him for purity. There it says, know my heart and know my thoughts. Two areas that David specifically speaks of that he is asking God to search and to try to look at him so deeply that he sees all that there is and then to test his purity. First of all, in the area of the heart, the word heart here is the literal heart. It's the beating heart that's within every person there that pumps the blood through our lives. And this is being used by uh, David to um, speak to his physical life. So he's asking God, I want you to search. I want you to try my physical life, the life that I live in this world, the inside and the outside of my life as I live it here and now on this earth. So he wants God to search him, to penetrate him, to go deep into him, examine every aspect, every facet of his heart, all that he is in the physical sense in this physical world. Then he says that he wants God to search him and not only know his heart, but to try his thoughts. His thoughts here is that which he knows. It's literally his knowledge, it is the idea of his mind and of his attitudes and of his understandings of all that there is there. So he is asking God, I want you to test the purity of my mind, of my thoughts, my understanding, my knowledge and all that I know in my life here. I want you to test this to the nth degree to see how pure it really is in my life. So David is saying, I want you to test I want you to try me. I want you to search me in the physical sense and in the mental sense. And what he's talking about here is in his totality, the fullness of himself, which would include his relationship with God, his spiritual relationship with God. Now, as we think about this, David's praying here, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. What is David doing? David is asking God... To put him under the microscope. David's asking God to put him under the microscope that he, that being God, would search through his life, that God would search through his thoughts, through all that he is, and that as he examines him, he would test him and try him in his purity. Now, if this searching and this testing of David's entirety to the nth degree for his purity were not enough, let's note what David is asking God to reveal to him. You see, he's asked God to search him. Now he's asking God to reveal something to him. Look at what he says here. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. David's asking two specific things from God. I want you to examine me. I want you to try me. And then I want you to reveal something to me. And the things he's asking him to reveal to him is if there's any wicked way in me. The phrase any wicked way can be translated an offensive way or hurtful way. The idea of this phrase is, is the idea of, uh, is there anything in my life that causes pain, sorrow, or is wrong, that produces those things in my life? Ultimately, what David is saying, God, show me the sin in my life. Show me where I've missed the mark. Show me how my physical life, how my mental life, my entirety has been wrong, that's caused pain or sorrow, or been wrong, and it's going in relationship in a down step. Show me the pain, the sorrow, and the wrong against you, God. Show me the pain, the sorrow, and the wrong against my other, my bro my brothers and sisters, other men and women. And then show me the pain and the sorrow and the wrong in my own life. And he's saying this. Any pain, any sorrow, any wrong that has been caused by my hand against you, against 
another person and even against myself, I want you to reveal this to me. I want to see this pain. I want to see this sorrow. I want to see this wrong. And the implication here is I want to be this to be revealed to me so it can be taken care of, so I can confess that sin, so I can repent of that sin, so I can be more like you. I want you to penetrate me, search me, try me in every regard of my life, every part of my being, so that I can see what's wrong with me in relationship to you, in relationship to others, and even in my own self, so I can correct this situation. And then he goes on and he says, I not only want you to reveal to me what's wrong in my life, but I want you to reveal to me the path that I need to take in life and lead me in the way everlasting. He's asking God, he's asking God to reveal to him not only the sin, but asking him to reveal to him how he should live his life that would be a life that is everlasting. And the idea is an eternal life, going into the very presence of God. So it's the idea of a life that is pleasing and honoring to God. It is the idea of a life that is going to be in accord with God. And Paul sums that up in the New Testament by the idea of being an imitator of the Father is dearly loved children, walking in love as Christ has loved us. So, so David is saying, I want you to go into my life. I want you to penetrate into every facet of my life and examine me. I want you to try my purity and test my purity out. And when you've done this deep examination, when you've put me in these trials and tested my purity, when you've laid me out before the microscope of your eye and you see faults in my life, you see sin in my life against you, against others, against myself. I want you to reveal that sin to me so I can deal with it. And not only do I want to see that sin and deal with that sin, I want you to show me how you want me to live. I want you to show me the path that you want me to take. I want you to lead me. I want you to set the course Set the direction, set the pace, set the destination of reaching you with my life. Now, can you imagine asking God to show you how you've caused pain and sorrow, to show you wrong in your life against God, against others, against your own self? Can you imagine asking God to show you the path, to set your path, where everything else is secondary at best, and we're just going with, for, and by God? Can you imagine asking God to look so deep into you that he sees everything there is? Can you imagine asking God to try you to note whether you are pure or whether you've come short so that he can show you your sin and can show you his path? This is exactly what David's doing. He's asking God to come in and to penetrate into his life so deep, so effectively, so earnestly he's praying for this that it would change him in ways that nothing else would ever change him. Many times we may ask God to forgive us of our sins. Many times we may confess our sins against God, against others, against even ourselves. But how often do we pray for God to reveal them? There's a difference. Sometimes we may pray, God, show me your way. Show me the direction in this situation or this circumstance. But do we pray, God, set the very course of my life that I would deny and forsake all but you, that I might live holy before you and for you and by you, that I might have eternity in a life with you that is surpassing this life? 
Let's ask ourselves the question, are we praying for God to penetrate into, into our life? Not holding God at bay, not saying, God, okay, I'll give you on this part, but not this part. But for God to come in so deep that he digs down to the deepest, darkest cellars of our heart, which we try to hide from everybody. God knows them, yes. But are we asking God to come in, search us, try us, reveal our sin, reveal how to live? Are we seeking such a life of prayer that penetrates so deep into us that it can change us beyond measure? If we think about our study thus far, we have learned that God, that Christ, teaches us to pray endlessly, always to pray. We've learned that God, how Jesus has taught us to pray authentic prayers. But my friends, unless our prayer life becomes a life of prayer, asking God to penetrate into our lives, as I said at the very start, we are only scratching the surface. We are only just having shallow prayers. And what that means is that we are missing out. We are missing out on all that God wants to give us. Because you see, we may be scared to pray. God, search me and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Show me, reveal to me any wicked way in me. And show me the way everlasting. We may be scared to pray that prayer, but there should be no fear in such a prayer because such prayers that are so deep and so penetrating may, yes, be painful in the moment, but they lead to a relationship with God that is of such closeness and of such richness and of such value. And it creates within us a satisfaction and a relationship with God of worship and praise, a relationship of serving God like nothing else. We're missing out when we don't pray penetrating prayers. We're missing out on the graces of God, the nurturing of God, the power of God being unleashed. So let's don't just pray the shallow prayer. Let's begin to pray deep, penetrating prayers for God to come in and to search and to try and reveal. Because, my friends, that will change us and create in us things that nothing else ever will. Let us pray. Father in heaven, as David prayed such a deep prayer, May we as your people today begin to pray these same prayers of such penetrating power that you do examine us in all ways, every regard, every aspect of life. And that you could reveal to us the sin that's in us that we could deal with it because sin separates us from you. And that we would pray, dear God, earnestly for your guidance. Father, may this become our prayer life because it is the life that will lead us to you in such ways that we will see you afresh and anew, experience you in power and glory as never before. May this be our prayer life. In Jesus' name we do ask this. Amen. I hope and pray God will bless you and give you all that you need in life. And remember, he is giving you all that you need because he is the giver of all good and perfect gifts. He gives us all spiritual blessings. He never puts more on us than we can bear up or get out from under. He is our God, and he provides for all of our needs through the riches of Christ Jesus in glory. And he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask, think, or imagine by the very power that worketh in us for his glory in Christ Jesus and the church. Have a wonderful evening.